Hi, I'm Tyler Wood and I'm a guide at the Centre d'Histoire de Montréal. An ice shove is uh, basically a bunch of ice that's getting shoved onto shore in a river, lake or sea. You can end up with mountains, uh, you know, two, three stories high of big, thick chunks of ice just bulldozing anything in its way. When I talk about an ice shove at our museum, <laughs> We sometimes give the impression that it's a tsunami that comes in and, and people need to be disabused of that idea. It's, it's not as fast as a tsunami. It's rather slow moving, but it, it's got a, uh, some people say it's like thunder coming through. It's rather loud and it's unstoppable. So imagine a sumo wrestler just sort of waddling towards you. You've got some time to get out of the way. You're probably not gonna get crushed by the ice yourself. But if you've got a box car, if you've got a ship that's docked here in the winter, or wooden shed, that stuff is gonna get crushed because we're not talking about little ice cubes here. We're talking about ice that's, you know, eight, 10 inches thick, big slabs um, being tossed around by the currents, creating these big mountains that are, you know, higher than some of these buildings here. The old port was the biggest port in Canada, the second biggest in North America. So you've got to imagine, as they're growing the port in the industrial era in the 19th century, they're building sheds and railroads and these keys and piers. Uh, you've got a lot more to damage uh, when there's an ice shove coming through. And that's a big problem. If every two years or so, you've got to rebuild bits of the port because ice is, is breaking down everything. We see pictures uh, taken in the 19th century of people on this site. So it is kind of a fun thing to be a part of, uh, as long as you know you're not having your building crushed. In the late 19th century, because these floods are getting more and more problematic, the ice shows and the floods that come with them. In, in 1886, for example, the flood stretches all the way to Square Victoria and hits a lot of low-lying neighborhoods. So it's not just the port, it's, it's all over. And the city is realizing it's got to do something. It uh, builds walls. It's going to build guard piers, or what we call the McKay Jetty, or today the Cité du Havre. That's a big finger of artificial land that's basically acting as a dike, uh, blocking the currents and the ice coming with it from entering the port. You also have these keys here, the, where the science center is. And um, these are raised. They're made of reinforced concrete. They're not going anywhere. Uh, so they're a lot more solid than the wooden ones that were here earlier. On top of that, uh, as we get into the 20th century, you've got icebreakers patrolling the St. Lawrence River. That's a big help. The St. Lawrence Seaway is also going to uh, keep water flowing all year round uh, and certainly changes the hydrology uh, of the river. So that keeps floods and, and ice jams at bay. Uh, and the last thing I would mention is the uh, ice bridge. We've got an ice bridge uh, starting in the 1960s right next to the Champlain Bridge. When we see floods and ice shelves today, it's usually up near the, where the Ottawa River comes into the uh, Lac de Deux Montagnes. Here in the Old Port, it's rather rare. 